You have got to be joking. Edge-to-edge quilting over top of detailed applique? Who would do that? Well, listen to the story and I'll tell you why Barb and I chose this style of quilting for this particular quilt. And also for those of you who are quilters, I will walk you through the process in a small case study and show you how I did it. I'm Susan Smith and welcome to my studio, Stitched by Susan. I do a lot of quilting for other people, and every time that I'm working on a client's quilt, I really make an effort to talk to that client and get their feelings about the quilt, who it's intended for, what its uses are going to be, and what they've got in mind for it. And so those conversations really, really influence what the eventual quilting looks like. So let me tell you the story of this quilt. It belongs to a lady named Barb, who has graciously given me permission to share her story. Barb brought this quilt to me along with two others, and she's making this series of quilts for some very special friends. Barb is a widow, and these friends have journeyed with her through grief. They've shared and supported and are healing together, and so Barb is wanting to make these beautiful keepsake quilts for them. Now, Barb has another thing going on in her life. She's also losing her eyesight. And so she's been making quilts for a long time, and mostly she has chosen to entirely quilt and finish her own projects so that they're completely handmade and made with love by her. But now this gradual loss of eyesight is shortening the time that she has available, and she wants to get these projects done, and she wants to give them to her friends. That all makes sense, doesn't it? I think we'd want to do the same thing in that situation. So when Barb reached out to me and wondered if I would quilt these projects, we began to have this conversation about, well, what type of quilting are we going to do? In the world of machine quilting, there's two very general divisions of types of quilting. One is edge to edge, where the same quilting design is repeated literally from one edge to the other of the quilt. There's no stopping and starting for borders or different seams and blocks or even for thread changes. It's the same thing from edge to edge. In contrast, custom quilting can be slightly more complex, all the way up to way, way, way more complex, but it always involves doing different quilting in different areas, usually dictated by blocks or borders. It often has thread change colors, and it frequently just has more detailed, more complex quilting and a lot of stopping and starting, just more complex. So from a cost point of view then, where an edge-to-edge quilt might say cost $100 to complete, a custom one will be four or five or 10 times as many hours and therefore a great deal more cost. So you can see where Barb and I were coming from then in making this decision. Barb has three quilts she wants to finish and more in the future. And so she's considering how much do I want to invest in perfection and heirloom quality quilting, or how important is it to me to get these quilts done and be able to give them to my dear friends? And I promised you a case study. So I'm next going to take you through some of the quilting process. These applique elements were bonded onto the quilt. And in some cases there was two, three, and occasionally even four layers of that bonded fabric, making quite a thick resistant portion to stitch through. So that was one of the main difficulties that I faced. So I thought it might be interesting for you to be able to watch the quilting happen, see what precautions I had to take, and then see the finished result. Here we are at the quilting machine. I'm stitching on a Bernina Q24. The design I'm doing in this example is entirely freehand, and it's what I call an all-over feather. So quilters will recognize the feathery shape. And for those of you who are machine quilters, I do have a free class on this particular design, and I will put a link to that in the description below. But it's a spineless feather, meaning there's no actual quilted spine. I'm just quilting the alternate sides of this feather plume and therefore able to move freely across the quilt top. I don't have to go back to the beginning of the spine at any point. My personal favorite kind of um, edge to edge feather. But here I am stitching over this applique. It is machine applique. All the colored elements, the oranges and the greens are fused down. And right where I'm stitching now, 
Can you see how the quilt is resisting a little bit? It jerked a little bit. That's because there were four layers there counting the stem. So that fused area is quite thick and bulky indeed. So one of the main precautions that I took throughout this quilt was to slow down. And I would say I slowed down my quilting probably by about 30% over what I would typically do. You know, my machine is heavy duty and yet it is just a machine. It is just a needle. And the faster I go, the more likely I felt I would be to break needles in those thick areas or even simpler things like having skipped stitches. And I don't want that. I want that to look as good as possible. So first precaution was to slow down overall. And then when I came to the particularly thick areas like flowers, I slowed down even more. And as I near the corner here, be paying attention to how I'm able to bend and fit in this all over feather design to exactly fit the quilt. So I can fill in the bottom in this area that I'm approaching right now so that it exactly fills up to the edge, but doesn't necessarily quilt over it. So that's a great um, feature of doing freehand quilting is that you can fit it wherever you want it to be. One other thing I want to point out that I bet you observant quilters have already noticed. On the front edge by the red, uh, red snapper loading system, there's this strip of kind of ugly green fabric, which when you see the backing later, you'll realize that does not match. Well, here's the thing. The backing fabric was only a very little longer than the actual quilt. And I like to have a little bit more space to play with. So I extended the backing of the quilt by sewing this, it's about a four inch wide strip of green fabric onto the bottom as a kind of leader. And I used that for my attachment process and it just gave me a little bit more space um, at the top end of my quilt too. I was able to shift it down a little more and have a bit more space. So that's a little trick to have in your back pocket. Just keep a long scrap. I use it over and over again on different quilts to extend the backing when needed. So I've backed up so you can see the flower portion again. Can you see how slowly I'm going over those very thick areas in the center? And you can see the quilt jerk just a little bit under me as it's trying to move smoothly under the needle. Something that machine quilters, particularly long armors, don't always think of. We have high speed machines that we're working on. And when you're moving and the needle is going at, you know, two or 3,000 stitches per minute in and out of the fabric, what happens is it actually flexes. As you are moving the machine across the quilt top, that needle is actually bending just minutely with each stitch as you move, right? Simply because it's down and then you're moving the machine slightly and then it's got to pull back up. So that little bit of flex matters. When you get to doing something thick like this or really thick bulky seams, that's why slowing down helps. It reduces the drasticness of that flex and greatly reduces then your risk of poor tension or missed stitches or a broken needle. So slowing down is your friend. Now that you know the story, Let's have another look at the finished quilt. This darker blue border went around the entire perimeter, but overall I'm happy with how those feathers provide even texture over the entire quilt top. I did use an aqua thread that matched this lighter aqua background so that the feather design really does seem to recede into the background. And first and foremost, when you see the quilt, it's the applique that catches your eye. It's the star for sure. I feel confident that with use and perhaps even a wash or two over time, this quilt will get soft and crinkly and those feathers will just become part of the texture. Look at that gorgeous swirl. Again, this crumpled up version just gives you a sense of how when it's all squished up and being snuggled under, this quilt is absolutely beautiful and the edge to edge design supports the applique and does not detract from it in any way. And this is the beautiful backing Barb chose. Those bright colors just speak of joy and life and they just suit the quilt perfectly. Isn't Barb's story a sweet one? I am so grateful that she chose me to work on these quilts for her and this one in particular. And we both are so glad that she now has this finished quilt that she can give with great love to her very dear friend. 
If you'd like to see more case studies or more freehand quilting designs, check out my monthly membership called Advance. I'll have details in the description below. Until next time, happy stitching.